Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. We're doing our first live education class tonight. So what we're gonna do is focus on a haircut that actually you guys requested. So um, let me turn that down. There we go. There we go. Um, so we're gonna have some fun. You guys that are watching live, uh, thank you because we didn't really post about this too much. So uh, if you guys wanna ask questions, we'll definitely uh, love to answer them. So we're gonna have some people, I think Brian can hopefully pull that up. Can you do that? You think? Thanks, cool. So we're gonna pull up your questions. If you guys have any questions about the haircut that's going on, but really the goal of this is to, uh, we always are trying to film haircuts on Wednesday nights. So this kind of makes us film haircuts and colors and different things and just giving you guys classes for free every week on free salon education. So uh, we're gonna start off. I wanna show you guys the haircut that you chose. It's a girl from some band. I can't even remember the band's name. Uh, I guess I'm showing my age, but uh, this is uh, asymmetrical to me, like a pixie cut. So we're gonna go through that. And uh, you want her haircut? Then let's just give it to you. <laughs> um, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna do this haircut. And I'm, I'm really excited to just break down my thoughts on it. I think there's a couple things I wanna change about it a little bit, um, just because it's, it's pretty heavy on the one side. So I wanna make it a little sleeker, That's but hi dad. Hi, dad. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so uh, we're gonna get into cutting it. So basically what I wanna focus on first is we're gonna comb the hair back. Um, definitely, we're gonna saturate a little bit more. So we're gonna work the hair back, we're gonna find the natural parting, and then we're gonna start our sectioning. Basically what I wanna do is focus on mapping out every move that I'm gonna make throughout the haircut. So we're gonna work the hair back, I'm gonna work off a left-hand side parting. So we'll part back just to the mid-crown. Tighten that up a little bit. So we have a nice clean side part. So that's gonna be basically the, the base structure of the haircut. I'm gonna turn her head here. Tilt her down a little bit. Now. With that side parting, now I'm gonna shift through the center back all the way down the middle of the head, right to the nape. Just keeping everything nice and clean. That's really the goal is because if we're working clean, then we're not gonna, you know, we'll keep our work organized and it's gonna be more precise in the end result. So now we have from the left-hand side parting over to mid-crown and then down center back. So my goal here is I want to section off the top of the haircut. So from that side parting, we have the heavier side, if you want to show that haircut again, Chris. So um, show the girl. So she's got, it's, it's a deeper part. Um, so we'll work on that a little bit later, but she's got her heavy side and then she's got the weak side. The weak side's cut really short. So that's kind of the goal in this haircut is I want to make sure that I am, uh, I'm going deep enough with the parting. So it's almost like a disconnection as it sweeps to the side. So we're going to go the top kind of uh, past the apex high crown and I'm going to work along the parietal ridge over. drawing a line right to the edge of the eyebrow. And that's gonna be our first section there. So we just finished our salon day and it smells like food in here. Everyone's eating. Good job guys. Yeah. Right. All right, so I'll tilt that down a little bit. Actually, just take it off so you guys can see. Nice little triangle section. It's following, it starts high and then rides the parietal ridge over to the edge of the eyebrow. Now, to create that disconnection, hey, my cable. 
you could change that based on density, yes. So um, if you guys want, you could, those microphones. Um, yeah, Chris, if you want to. This wanna, one works. That one works. If you want to unmute the other ones, Chris. Oh. And they can talk. Is this My one microphone's good? working. We have the whole uh, crew here tonight, so. Good evening. Good evening. Justin said he was leaving, but. Well. well. <laughs> We're addictive. So now I'm just going to take a, a small little wedge of a triangle out from this side. That's going to connect into this. So if she was, if this is for a guest that maybe you would um, not do as extreme of a haircut, you could, could, you could leave this on this side right at the part and not have that disconnection kind of come over the top. But for this haircut, we're going to just take a little extra hair, twist it up. I'll wrap it around this section. And then there you go. So to start this haircut, I'm actually going to work on the left-hand side, the short side first, and then we'll build up the weight uh, towards the back. So I'm going to section from, again, that midpoint of the crown, just to behind the ear. And this is the section that I want to focus on first. So really what we're doing is we're just breaking it up so that you don't have so much hair to work with and it simplifies the entire haircut. To me, it's way more complicated not to section a lot because then you're just holding a bunch of hair in your hands. You don't know what you're doing with it. So uh, you want to make sure that you do the sections, you plan it out, and then you proceed with the haircut. So I'm going to clip the back away. And we're going to start working on the side. We're going to work, if you uh, pull up that picture again, my goal here is to work with diagonal back sections because it's got more, a little bit of a round shape to it. You can see that it collapsed. The, the way that the weight collapses in the haircut is shifting backwards. So um, we're going to work diagonal back. Let me just see. Cool. So... We're going to take our first diagonal back section. And I think it's going to be easier if I shift over here. How's that? Looks great. Better? Okay. So we're going to take the section diagonal back. I'm working palm to palm, fingers pointing down. The, only thing I'm going to do is you're going to see a slight little shift with my finger to add a little more weight to the top, but I don't want to do too much because that's naturally going to happen anyways because of the way that her head bends uh, and shifts naturally. So combing the hair into my hands and working that line into the hair. And working diagonal back that way. Take another section. And what I want to do is just grab a little bit of that hair that I just cut, but not the whole section. It's to keep my guide moving, we're working with the traveling guide. And our finger angle is just slightly shifted towards myself, just building up a little bit of weight in there. Did you want music on? I feel like I would love music, but that's okay. Because YouTube's a little feisty with, with music. I could sing. You could sing, Brian? You could hold your phone up to it. You gonna get a shoot some more? <laughs> right. You can put the Billy Ray Cyrus song on again. So is that a no on the singing? You can I sing, you Brian. Sing for us, Brian. Brian, I love your singing. Only if you sing Baby Got Back. <laughs> Baby Got Back. Christina and I can do Love Shack. Let's see if we can see this. So we've worked through it, working palm to palm, just cutting standard uh, traveling guide through it, pointing down with my fingers. Uh, that's pretty a pretty easy section there. I 
keep that clipped away. It's easy for you to it's easy for Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you guys already. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I just received a comment. Yeah. I received a comment of, from somebody that watched the show this morning, and they yeah. said they're very disappointed to see that you shed the mullet for tonight's filming. If you would like. We, we had it on five minutes ago. Yeah, you missed so. it. Uh, off camera, there was mullets happening. Shirts off, mullets on. Shirts yeah. off, mullets on, tattoos out. <laughs> <laughs> now, so now that I've gotten to the point where I'm uh, following the round of the head here, I want to start to build a little bit of weight into the back. If we could pull up uh, the photo. The challenge with this photo is that you can't see necessarily what the back looks like, but I'm going to assume that it's a little bit tighter and then just shifts and gets longer. So as we're working through here, I obviously don't want the rest of the haircut to be this disconnected. So now I'm going to start to push and build extra weight towards the back. So um, I'm going to let out this section. And we're going to work through here. Still working diagonal back. Yeah, yeah, this will be available afterwards. So now, after this section, this is going to be my guide to start working towards the back. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start over directing the hair uh, past one section. So we're going to, so basically, I cut this section. Now everything will shift to that, uh, over direct to that. And then as I work through, everything will over direct to the previous to just start building uh, the weight into the back. So now I'm going to still be working diagonal back through the back section here in the nape area. And as I'm working, the hair dries up, so we'll just keep it saturated a little bit. Really just to ensure that we have even tension throughout the haircut. And we're working with a round shape here, so I'm going to round the corner. I'm not worried about over-directing anything, and you'll see that as it falls, it kind of squares off anyways, but it's softer uh, within the shape. So still working diagonal back, and key to this is just to make sure that you're not over directing it all all the way over to the edge because then you're going to push too much weight and you're going to have to go back in later and cut it off so uh, just grabbing a little bit of that old hair over directing it slightly into my guide and working through connecting it into the top The best part about working diagonal back throughout this whole thing is that I'm naturally pulling that weight towards myself. So no matter what, we're going to start to push some of that weight towards the front. So it makes it a little bit easier throughout the haircut. You can see this would be straight out from the head. So what I'm doing is just taking each section and slightly shifting it down just to continue building that weight through. Find your guide in there. and then working through the haircut that way. So we're starting to get that buildup of weight and it's shifting off to the right side. I'm gonna clip this away just so we keep it clean. And just following the head shape, 
the biggest thing that uh, well the key point that we're working with here is just making sure we're following the head shape but we're over directing it the right way we just got a new comment and uh, yep. it said new subscriber here you're all going to heaven for doing this video thanks sweet hey you're welcome that's all it <laughs> took I'm not mad about that that's right now you really got to change that Instagram handle there, Justin. Tom Garden Forever 666. I'll just keep making videos and it won't matter. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> All right. Who was that that made that comment? What's their name? Yeah. <laughs> it, Thad. It was, it was uh, Robin Chenwell. Well, thank you, Robin. All right. Hey, Karen Wheeler. Chris, can we see you go? Kara, sorry, Kara Wheeler. She's at a cosmetology school right now, and it's super helpful. Awesome. That's what we're here for. All right, so you can see that as the head shape is shifting back. Now, this is the big thing with me and haircutting is right now the head is starting to move away. So even so if i kept pulling everything to myself what's going to happen is this keeps getting heavier and heavier and that's what happened when you look at the haircut that's on the screen i mean you're as the head shape is moving a lot of people are not being conscious conscious of that they're focusing on where they're holding their hand but you got to focus on both you, ha you have to really understand where the head is moving to and where you're pulling the hair to so as the head starts to shift away my elevation needs to grow uh, throughout the haircut. So as I'm working down here, the head shape shifting away. So I want to just not shift it too far back. Just keep it nice and steady where it's at and follow that guideline, but really focus on elevation. And then towards the bottom here, if I can forget that I have that nice little handy shifter. You can see my finger angle is still parallel with the head as I work through the bottom. So we're starting to build up a graduation in the back, but it's still nice and tight to the head. But you could see that the weight shifts and moves and pushes to the opposite side. Keeping the clean sections. Again, focus on that elevation as the head moves away. So I'm just kicking my elbow up a little bit, following the guide. And my body position, because I'm cutting a round shape here, shifts with it so i move my feet along with the haircut so as i'm moving around the head my feet are moving with me just want to say thanks for the love from hondo bonanzo <laughs> an amazing name it says thanks for the videos you guys are phenomenal you're phenomenal if you're hanging out with us on a wednesday night What do you think Hanzo Bonanzo looks like? I would love to meet them. Red Games says it's looking good, Matt. Thanks. I'm sweating and the lights and the champagne has gotten to my head, I think, a little bit. And I only had like half a glass. And the yeah, and the jacket, of course. And it might be the hat, too. I and the hat. I yeah, it's a little bit of everything. You know what it also is? I realized as I'm doing this, I'm like, you know what? If I screw this up, <laughs> there's no turning back. This is it. This is You're the, the one that didn't want any more editing. I know, right? Talk about stepping it up. 
This is like making Katy Perry sing a cappella without like fake vocals behind her. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now with the over direction, <laughs> with the over direction, now we're going to shift it even further back. So we're starting to round that last corner uh, on the head. So I really want to start pushing that weight forward. So Obviously, I'm not over directing it all the way back because then we'd end up with a, a long or really long side. But I want to make sure that I'm just over directing it a little extra. And this is really based on feeling. I think, um, you know, a lot of hairdressers want to know exact angles and everything. I think that's going to change with the difference in the, uh, the density of the head, uh, of the hair, the, the difference in the uh, head shape. Pretty much, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it. Real quick, because literally as you're saying that, somebody just asked if you were cutting at a 45 degree angle. So I don't know if you want to, you could flesh that out just a little bit more about what part of the head you're changing your angles to make the haircut flow or what? Yeah, so really when, you, when you're looking at dimension and basically just the way that, uh, or not dimension, but uh, density in a haircut. So when we're working with a different density, this is, you know, mannequin has typically a, a medium density of hair. So um, I don't have to worry about too much as I'm shifting through. But when I hold hair in my hands, I'm really focused on how much, how much weight am I going to push. And so as I work with this haircut, you can see how that weight is starting to shift and get heavier to the one side. And really that's all on a feeling. I know when I pick up a certain amount of hair, and I want to shift a lot of weight, I just know I'm going to drop it down. And that doesn't mean that I'm going to drop it down and basically uh, keep it at a 45 degree angle or a zero degree. I mean, it, let's just say if we're, if we're going to give an angle to it, I'm keeping it at about zero degrees off of the head here. And the reason this is zero degrees is because this is 90. So if we're working at 90 here, and I'm holding it straight out from the head. So this is almost at zero. That's why you're seeing quite a bit of weight being built up. But as I work through, that doesn't mean I'm gonna keep it at zero. It's kind of like uh, when we're coloring or cutting or foiling uh, hair. When you're coloring hair and you're putting foils in, there's nothing natural about, let's say, a weave, slice, weave, slice, weave, slice. It's the same thing with hair cutting. You don't have to keep everything at a 90 degree the whole time. As you're working through it, you want to just have a feeling for how the head shape is moving and shift your elevation during that. So I hope that that helps you guys and kind of answers that question because um, we're not necessarily keeping at a certain angle the whole time we're doing the haircut. Um, we are following a guide though throughout it. What are you guys laughing about? Justin just popped up in the window. Like, Did he have a shirt on at least? <laughs> So just to hit a little bit more, we've got some more questions from you guys. Uh, Manuel Menchaca said, even if you did mess up, Matt, it would be a great way to show people how to fix it because everyone makes mistakes. Ah, I love this positive energy here. And then Red Game says, I've been following your videos for a long time. He's actually a hairstylist. He just got out of, just got out of work, and here he is watching haircut videos. Awesome. All right. So again, if you guys have any questions, definitely post them. So. Oh, they are. <laughs> yeah. I got this. Keep it up. All right. So again, don't want to have too much over direction because we still have quite a bit of room to work here. And I don't want to push too much weight or too much length to the front. So I'm going to grab my next section. We're going to cut this working at about a 45 degree angle. Yeah. Uh, AJ Jones says, so could I say the further we want the weight pushed away from you, the more you over direct the opposite way. Yeah. Towards yourself. Don't answer the answer now. You're reading it into a microphone, right? I guess. <laughs> okay. So they, whoa, whoa they whoa. heard you. I'll answer this. Yes, you're right. Yes. <laughs> Did you get your haircut? Everyone got their haircut today. 
today. I didn't. <laughs> what? So we're going to be doing these classes every Wednesday night. Brian's going to do next week. What are we going to do, Brian? Uh, next week, I actually have a really great model who's a natural redhead. And we haven't discussed exactly what we're going to be doing. Definitely, I want to play with the warmth in her hair because I feel like, you know, for a few months now we've been looking so much at ashy tones and cool tones and platinums and stuff like that. I'd really like to, you know, look at how gorgeous warm colors can be. I want to play with some golds and play with her natural red. And I don't know, we're kind of just going to sort of let it flow and see what we can make happen. Nice. All right, so real quick, just because I've, I've went through all diagonal back through this side, so now I want to work diagonal forward, just clean it up, and uh, just do a little bit of cross-checking. So all of this is going to come straight out from the head. We're going to go through, clean it up. Just real quick, but I just want to make sure that all of this is laying nice and smooth through the back. This way, when we blow it dry and then we start seeing weird things in the weight. We don't have to try to fix anything or adjust anything in the, uh, in the dry cut. So working diagonal back, just making sure that my elevation is the same as I worked when I was working in the first place. I don't know what I'm talking about. Wait, I just want to say we just got a great comment. Yeah. Uh, salon lady says, love this beautiful haircut, working out on a treadmill to your tutorial. <laughs> That's <today>. awesome. <laughs> oh, it's great. I wish I was on a treadmill. Uh, maybe I should get a treadmill. And cut while you're on a treadmill? Yeah. Don't you think? That would no. be yes. like no. a treadmill desk. We didn't want to say anything, but yeah. So what are you doing right now? So now I'm working scissor over comb, just because this is super short. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Uh, yeah. What are you guys laughing about? No. Oh, because I changed the subject quickly. Oh. She knows how to steer me. She's been with me for 10 years. Pam Berry T says, just wanted to tell y'all thank you for doing this. I'm a newer stylist and I'm always looking for education. So she appreciates it. Awesome. So even when you're cross-checking and we're doing uh, scissor over comb, it's still the same. So because we worked diagonal back in the first place, now we're working diagonal forward. And just going through and dusting the ends of the hair and checking it that way. All right, that's good. So now we're working with the heaviest part uh, because not only are we going to have this fall down, but then we're going to have this top disconnected and falling over it as well. So if you want to pull up the picture one more time, I think that this is where uh, a lot of people have a challenge um, is because they're going to cut this side and hold it down here and cut to create that angle right away. And then what's going to happen is this is going to fall over top and then you're going to try to point cut into it, layer it and make it skinny. Well, what we can do is remove a lot of weight from the bottom. <laughs> What we can do is remove a lot of weight from this area right away and then this top will fall disconnected nice and sleek at the end. So I'm going to saturate it with a little water before we start. Sherry Burr wants to know where you went to cosmetology school, Matt. I went to cosmetology school in Davenport, Iowa. She's also from Iowa in the Quad Cities, Davenport, Iowa. Capri. Capri College. Yes. Capri. How do you say that? As a fellow Iowan? Iowan, yeah. <laughs> That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really speak words. Hey. No, oh, we're just kidding. Hey. When I lived in Maine, they called them maniacs. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Philadelphia. Sure. Pennsylvania. All right. So now 
I'm working on the heavy part. I want to collapse it, but what I'm going to do is go through with a little bit of a higher elevation uh, throughout the haircut here. And then I'm going to go through and, and probably remove a little bit more weight, but I want to see where it's at uh, when we're done with it. So I'm going to still continue to work palm to palm. I'm going to just tilt the head towards me. Do you mind that I answer questions on here? No. Okay. Because someone just asked, Manuel asked again, uh, if it's a pixie cut, how often would you have your client come back in to get it cleaned up? I personally, what works for me a lot with these short cuts, I tell them, you know, industry average, you shoot for four to six weeks, so let's do five for your return, and then see either that's going to be perfect, or the next time you can go for a week sooner or a week later, and then that keeps them in that, that good average four to six week window. Yeah. This is definitely a haircut that they need to maintain quite a bit because um, the grow out, as you can see in the, in the picture of the girl who we're kind of cutting this after, she, that's gonna, that side is going to blow up. So you want to make sure that you're coming in every four weeks to get that weight removed so you don't have to remove more weight than you need to uh, just because they're not going to come in that often. So as you can see, I worked a little bit lower on that first cut. Now as I work up to the middle of this section, I'm going to shift my elbow up. And then towards the top, I'll shift up again. Take another section. At this point, we're almost, we're slight diagonal forward. All right, now the last couple sections, I'm gonna shift even further back because I wanna push a little extra weight to the front, but I, don't wanna, I didn't wanna do that too early because then it would get too long. So I'm gonna cut this in half because we're working um, with a little bit longer section at this point. But instead of coming straight, pretty much straight out with a slight shift back, I'm going to shift it all the way back to that section and make the cut. And then I'll grab the rest of the section with a lower elevation and connect it together. And this last little bit Again, coming back, still I'm not shifting it too far. Hopefully you guys can see that angle in there. And then just that last little corner or edge, shift. Got a good question here, Matt. Someone asked, yep. uh, what's the client's head position when cutting sides or back, or is that not important? So head position is important, but the, the reason head position is important is because what we're focusing on is the comfort of us. So let's say I'm going to work here and I want to elevate nice and high, but I'm getting higher on her head. So that's harder for me to get up here. So what I'm going to do is just tilt her over to me and then I'm more comfortable. So this slight little shift, I mean, we're cutting over 90 degrees at this point and I can do that comfortably. If I had her head tilt like this, it wouldn't be as easy. So that's the big thing with the head positioning. A lot of people think, you know, if I tilt her head really far down and I'm cutting the back, it's not going to do that little flip out thing, but that has nothing to do with how she's tilting her head. It has everything to do with your finger position. So head, the way that you put the head is all about making you comfortable within the haircut. Now we've got this side. It has a, a nice little buildup of weight to it, but it's not too strong. And the top part, we're going to cut um, with more of a concave kind of feel to it. So haircut's almost done. I'm going to let out the top. 
while you're saturating, just to go off of what you were just saying, one of the things that I had heard early on in my career that sort of stuck with me was it's better for your client to have their head in a position that makes them slightly uncomfortable for like eight minutes than for you to be uncomfortable for 35 years while you're working. That's true. So we'll comb that whole top section over. So now you'll see the disconnection right now. You could go in and cut this top dry if you want to. I personally, I like to get a lot of that bulk out of there. Then we'll blow dry it and we'll cut into it. Let's see if I can. All right, so now we're gonna work diagonal back, kind of following the round of the head and I'll shift the head down so you guys can see the section. I'm gonna comb this up, but here is, you know what, why don't you go to that one, the other camera, other camera. That's good, I think they saw it. So we're working from the part over to where we were disconnected before. I'm gonna stand in the front because that's gonna be the easiest because what we're going to do is cut short to long. So I'm going to start my disconnection. I'm going to grab my guide. And what I'm going to do is use a guide from the side here. Let's see, that's actually a good angle right there. So we'll use that guideline, but now my finger angle on my elbow is gonna shift up and we're gonna cut short to long right in the back here. So I'm creating my, my what's gonna be a stationary guide. So I'm gonna comb across the head again, same section, over directing it back to that stationary guide Shift my elbow up and cutting that short to long. And what that's going to do is it's going to push this longer hair over and off to this side, but it's collapsing and taking the weight out of the hair that's like on its way there. And then um, what we can do well, with the other section that we just cut previously, the other panel, uh, that panel, we already removed weight from it. So that disconnection will fall over top and it'll be nice and light. So again, pushing the hair away from me, pushing that new hair towards the guide, which we've talked about in a lot of our videos. Keeping that stationary guide cutting short to long. how quiet it is in here. <laughs> I know. All right, last section. Everything is being over-directed back. And what you could see, if we could show this, it's only being over-directed to basically the high point of the head, the apex part of the head. So uh, we're not going all the way back here. If we did that, it would be way too long in the front. So just be uh, cautious of how far you're over-directing that hair. And the last little bit, short to long. Matt, I have a question. If the client parts their hair on both sides, would you cut the fringe concave on both sides? 
This is a hard haircut if you're actually going to use this haircut on someone. Yeah, when it comes to You got to pick a side. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, has yeah. 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 So I'll show you where we're kind of at at this point. So you can see how it sweeps over. But what I love about this is it has a lot of texture in this part of the haircut. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow it dry real quick, uh, smooth it out a little bit, and then we're going to cut into it dry so you guys can see that. So let me uh, grab a little bit of products. You, you want to dry it, Dre? Sad? <laughs> All right, so we're going to add a little bit of product in here. Once I get the product in, I'm just going to comb that through. Just to make sure that it saturates on all the hair. And what you're going to see when you actually, when you do this haircut, is that first line that I created under the, uh, the temple area panel, that one and the top section are be a little bit disconnected. Sometimes that works really well, so we'll see after we get it dry uh, what we think, and we'll cut into it and see if we want to change anything. So, all right, let's make some noise real quick. I'm going to flat wrap around the head. What does flat wrap mean? Flat so wrap. I'm keeping a constant flow. How does it sound, Chris? Does it sound okay? Yeah. In your headphones? Uh -huh. It's not too loud. So I'm keeping a constant flow of the air using the nozzle of the blow dryer. And this is what I love. When you cut everything and you follow a guide really well, you can see how smooth those layers look and they just fall perfect. So we're going to go through, I'm going to work it one way, letting the nozzle and the air of the blow dryer, I'm not moving the blow dryer a lot, just letting that air flow over, making the cuticle nice and shiny, and then I'm going to work back. So keeping the base of the hair nice and flexible. Maybe a little bit. Um, yeah. Well, this is also a mannequin, so yeah. it's going to stick out a little bit more. But Um, I think any product that's, uh, like the product that I put in is kind of like a cream gel um, because it's going to have a, a nice hold to it. It's got a lot of shine because it's more liquid based. Um, if you use more of like a lotion based product, you might not get the shine. Uh, so it's more just for hold. And then we just got a question from Australia. Uh, an apprentice in Australia said you have to go through hairdressing school in America. Yes, you do. For many, many hours, depending on what state you live in, depends on how long you got to be in school.
right, so we're gonna smooth it with an iron real quick. monstrous disconnection over here. I don't know where that piece came from. Never claimed to be the best hair cutter in the world. So that's art right some there. Some of our amazing students that we have watching us right now said we should get YouTube for credit hours for this. They what? They should get YouTube credit hours for this <laughs> towards school. They should. I agree. I agree. Well, you get online if you classes want, with college courses so maybe that's where it will end up going i'll write you a note for your teacher <laughs> you know um yeah. Ooh. piece of yarn just fried <laughs> she has yarn yeah there's, well, there's always like a piece a random piece of yarn in there what does the yarn do holds it all together I don't know. Oh. I can move the camera view. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, you got someone from Argentina watching right now. Excellent. It's the beauty of the internet. DDS 81. So depending on the look you're going for, kind of as we're smoothing this out, you can see uh, how long it is and if maybe they're going to wear it curlier I think it would be a cool length I'm going to take out some of this weight and length uh, doing some point cutting but I kind of like how long it is right now but it just depends on what you're what you're looking for Now my big question would be for everyone that's watching, would, is there any techniques with dry hair cutting that you would like to see uh, as we move into the last little part? Um, there's things that I'm gonna do, but you know, if you're looking to learn something, we might as well, since you're on here live, take advantage of that. After I smooth out the hair, I like to go through and blow dry just one more time because I feel like it kind of breaks the hair up a little bit more and smooths it out. So I'm just going to do one little quick flat wrap again. Somebody's recording a little bit of uh, slithering. I'm guessing it's like 
take a little bit of slide cutting in there? Is there a way you can work that in just to show? Okay, yeah, we were actually going to do some of that. Look so. at that, AJ Jones. You knew what was coming. <laughs> so that works out. All right, so the first thing I want to do is as we're pushing weight over to the side, what's that? And point cutting. And point cutting? Okay. I am. What scissors are you changing to, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you could go into a dry cutting scissor. I like, this is the Ichi Nino San number one. This is actually the scissor that we modeled the FSE scissor after, but it's got a really soft blade. So I, I like the way that it feels in the hair. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take couple sections just out of the very front fringe area where this disconnects and runs over. First off, this beautiful disconnection that I created somehow, I don't know. Um, I'm going to take that and connect it to everything. So we're going to go in and we're going to do a little bit of tease cutting in that piece. So you can see how that just softens it right over the eye. And I'm just going to keep working diagonal forward across the top of the head bringing those sections over. And what I'm gonna do is each time I pull them over, I don't wanna change the length of these, but what I wanna do is just soften. And so what we're gonna do is, is tease cut. And what that is, is as I come into the hair, I'm gonna close halfway and push in. So we're only removing, if you can see, just a little bit of hair and a little bit of weight uh, in that section. We're not trying to remove a ton of stuff, a ton of bulk. So that just softens it up, keeps that angle throughout the front. So diagonal forward again, over direct it over to me, and just tease cut into it. So half closing the scissor as I work in, and that's it. So you can see how soft it comes across there. And now this is where we're gonna move into the slide cutting. So this top section is really what's a lot longer. You can see underneath here, this is our first panel. So there's the length there, it's about at the chin, which is perfect. And then the top part is where we over directed everything up and cut that angle. So really we could have shifted that angle, not cut it so long, and it wouldn't have been this disconnected. So depending on the look that you're going for, if you like how this is a lot longer, that's cool. Over direct it and change that angle. But if you want it to connect with the other side, then you know just don't shift your fingers so far. So I'm gonna show you both ways to do it. So we showed you how we can make it longer. Now what I'm gonna do is go through here and we're gonna do some slide cutting. So I'm gonna section off some of this hair. We don't need it all in there. And I'll softly clip it away. And we're gonna work with the slide cutting approach here. So what I'm gonna do is come in, half closing, and just working through the hair, softening the weight, and slightly changing length in the hair. So as I get to the bottom, I start to close a little bit extra and just remove the length off the bottom. Now I'll drop down the rest. And if it goes over there, then I'll change it. But for the most part, it looks good. I like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything diagonal back like I did on the top in the first place. So we have our line that goes up. And what I'm gonna do is just point cut into it. So this one I'm gonna go with my Z2s because I love the uh, tip of them. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Type Z2 has a really thick tip to the scissor blade. And what that does is gives me a lot of power when I'm point cutting. So I'm gonna go through, work diagonal back, and I'm just going to go through and, and soften this line, not changing it at all. And working through. Now the big thing with point cutting, Chris, if you could go to the, the main camera, because it's cutting off a little bit. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. So 
Um, as I'm point cutting, so I'll take a section, bring it back. Now, a lot of people I'll see point cutting and what they do is they go in just like this and they start chipping away at it. So if you guys have trouble with point cutting, what you can do for me that works is point away from yourself and then towards yourself. And that, what that's gonna do is, is help get the scissor in the right place. Now, the great part about that is now your steady blade is not the one that's coming after your finger as you're point cutting. So the steady blade can come across your finger and slide. So that way you don't cut yourself. When you come in like this, that blade is coming at your finger the whole time. The other thing is this looks a lot more comfortable than this does. So if you're point cutting and you notice that your elbow is always up in the air to go through here, or if you're coming in like this, it's just a lot easier to point away from, away from yourself than towards your face. Or do you like Brian and get swivels? Or get swivel scissors. Uh, speaking of types of scissors, there was a question I tried to answer on my own, but cutting's your thing, Matt. Uh, our girl Morgan Johnson has joined us. And okay. We're super happy about that. Um, she had asked if you use blending scissors when you do tease cutting, and I had said not really because when you're doing the tease cutting, it's generally more just the one blade that you need to, to catch the hair anyway. Right. She says she has seen in the past where it has been used in collections, and it seems to take out more bulk than length. Yeah, you can use a blending scissor. It's honestly going to do the same thing. Um, it's just how, when, you, when you're doing the tease cutting technique, it's how much you close the scissor. So if I close it a lot, it's going to obviously take all the length off. But what I like about it, and I use blending scissors, but what I like about using a regular scissor is if I have control of how much I want to close that scissor and how much I don't. On a blending scissor or thinning scissor or texture scissor, you have to close it because you can't half close that. Um, so no matter what, you're taking out a certain amount of bulk. So this way, I feel like I have more control on how much bulk I'm taking out and how much bulk I'm leaving in the haircut. So now what I wanna do, uh, we've pretty much finished up the cut. You can see I love how much texture is up here. It's got cool length to it. So what I'm gonna do is just go around and just do a little bit of detail work I'm gonna keep with the Z2 on this one because of the power in the tip. So as I'm working around the head, and we're just kind of cleaning up the lines. It's a lot easier when they don't have a real ear. Oh, she would have lost it on that one. So cleaning it up there. Then I'm going to go in the back and what I'm going to do here because we were over directing and pushing more weight over it's a little bit longer in the back and what I want to do is straighten that out so we're going to go through just use the tip of the scissor clean up the back I could probably lift her up and not kill my back right here but whatever. do you want the chair could use the chair you want it you're on it that's all right, I'll just stand like this. So cleaning up the back here. I love how that weight shifts over to the side. It's really cool. And now, even though this covers over the, the top or covers over the bottom, what I want to do is just section some of this away. And I'm going to do a little bit more slide cutting in here. So half closing, just pinching the hair, just take a little bit of extra weight out. And then what I'm going to do is cut into that line because I love if we have a disconnection over the top, but still a kind of nice strong line in the bottom. So I'm going to go through here using the tip of the scissor, slowly working my way across. I'll comb it down and then work the line again. And basically you'd want to keep working that line until you comb it and it doesn't, it still looks straight. So we have that disconnection over it. So 
So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I like it. I, like good? It. I think it looks delicious. <laughs> I want the hair cut. I'm going to add a little bit of wax to it. Nothing too crazy. Just to bring in a little bit of texture. Kind of fun, right? I love how seamless it is. How you go from the shorter to the longer, and it just blends so effortlessly. So let me give her a spin. Oh, so you can see the back and see how it goes over to that side. What do we think? I like it a lot. I like it. You like it? It's beautiful. Good job, so, Matt. I hope that this first class was a success when we compare it to can you put it back on the main camera oh do you want her on it no that's okay we got the we got this finished product so that's good enough all right guys so i hope it this makes sense to you i hope it, it works out definitely leave your questions in the comments below and we're going to have more free live education next wednesday night at 7 30. so we got brian here doing some color and then the next week i believe we have thad doing some men's cutting right so we have a, a lot of education lined up for you guys it's all free it's all right here we'll be here to answer your questions and everything so thank you guys so much for tuning in Make sure that you check out our, uh, subscribe to us right here on YouTube and also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also go to freesaloneducation.com. All the scissors that you see here are all available on shopfse.com. So if you guys are looking for new scissors, there's some good deals on there. Use the code uh, splitting hairs, or actually, why don't you use the code FSE live and you, I'll give you, uh, what am I gonna give you? let's say 10% off any scissor you want in the shop. So uh, just for tuning in. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.